beside Jesus is the right way. Now, as you can clearly see, we are on the northwestern corner of the Sea of Galilee, which is a lake in the shape of a harp. And this is why the Jews are, and the Israelis, we're calling it the Kinneret. Kinneret from the Hebrew word Kinor, which means a harp, a biblical harp. And as you can clearly see, the city of Tiberias is over there. From Mount Arbel with a V-shaped valley, that the Valley of the Doves, over there. From there, all the way to Capernaum and Bethsaida over there. This is the portion of land Jewish people lived in during the time of Jesus. In fact, when Jesus came from Nazareth down to Magdala, he either started walking along the shores, as the Bible says, and teaching in the synagogues, or taking the boat, but concentrating on this portion between Magdala over there and Bethsaida on, the, on, on this side over there. It is often mentioned that he went along the shores and met people and ministered, but the three major cities in which Jesus ministered in the Jewish section were Bethsaida, Capernaum, and Chorazin. Bethsaida and Capernaum are on the shores of the sea. Well, I say Capernaum is on the shores. Bethsaida used to be until there was a big earthquake and landslide that pushed the Sea of Galilee south about almost two-thirds of a mile. And now Bethsaida is further away from the shores. But then Chorazim is, is more on the hills above. And that creates a triangle. If you look at all three of them, it creates a triangle because Chorazin is above but in the middle. And so this is known to be the evangelical triangle of Jesus' ministry in that time. Most of his ministry and teaching and, and healing and, 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 and all of that would be in this area where we are at right now. I can clearly say that if you uh, take your two hands and you, you hold the area between the Mount Arbel and Bethsaida, you're basically holding two-thirds of the gospel within your hands, okay, which is uh, quite interesting. So this is the area. Two things you want to know. One, as the spring comes, flowers are everywhere here. We're just in the very first day of the spring, so you don't have it uh, all over, but it's certainly once we get to other places like Mount Carmel, you'll see carpets of flowers already. Speaking of the lilies of the field and all of that. But then, of course, we are in an area of basalt rocks or volcanic rocks. And much of that is, it looks like a round stone, and which really reminds you of a loaf of bread of those days. In those days, no one bleached the flour. It was all, of course, a full uh, grain bread. And the breads in those days were not full of preservants as we have today. Therefore, once one day was over, a bread would be very hard, almost as a rock. And uh, you could easily see something that might look like a stone and be confused with it as an old loaf of bread also. The same thing is opposite. You could see as an old loaf of bread and assume that it could be a, a volcanic rock as well. Speaking of asking for bread and getting stone instead. And so this is it. We are in, a, in, in, in this beautiful surroundings here. And um, no doubt this is the area of the Mount of the Beatitudes. And again, the reddest portion of your New Testament, if the words of Christ are in red, is of course Matthew 5, 6, and 7, which speaks of uh, what Jesus uh, said right here in this area. Any question? Nothing? Yes. Is this the same kind of mustard that would have been in Jesus' day? Mustard, by the way, can either be in this form. It can actually grow much bigger than what you see here to uh, almost a, a shape and a size of a tree. So um, we have this type of mustard, and you can have it in both ways. Uh, yeah, definitely. We have the same, that this this type, all around where we live in, in spring in New York, up there in New York. Mm -hmm. town, is there any town right where we were staying, North Genosaur? You said Magdala is a little bit further. Magdala down. is further. There was a place called Genosar. Oh, okay. Yes, in fact, it's interesting that you say that because the Sea of Galilee <coughs> has...
has several names in the scriptures and it always has to do with the nearest town where you came from. If you lived in Tiberias, you call it the Lake of Tiberias. If you lived in Gennesaret, you often call it the Sea of Gennesaret. If you just lived in the Galilee, it's the Sea of Galilee. So it's all the names of the same lake.